باطل الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم ومخرج الصبر من الألم والملقي التوبة على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الأكرم ذو الشرف الأشم والنور الأتم والكتاب المحكم خير ولد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فنصلي ونسلم ونبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد بن عبد الله وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة في الدين بدعة وكل بدعة في الدين ضلالة وكل ضلالة في الدين في النار أما بعد قال عز من قائل بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين أمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا All praises due to Allah the most gracious the most merciful and peace and blessings be upon his last and final messenger He who Allah guides will never be misguided and he who Allah misguides will never be guided We begin today's khutbah with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just returning from al-Isra'i wal miraj and he has left this experience, out-of-body experience and the first person he sees when he leaves his home is Amr ibn Hisham, Abu Jahl and Abu Jahl sees the Prophet وسلم, and he sees a confused look on his face an amazed look on his face he says, Oh Muhammad, what's wrong with you? What happened? He told him, last night I went to Masjid Al-Aqsa and I met so and so and I did so and so when I returned this morning. So Abu Jahl heard this story and I want you to picture this at the time. It would take them a month to travel from Mecca to Palestine and a month to return. For the Prophet wasallam to do it in minutes or in seconds or that night, it was impossible at the time. So Abu Jahl decided, he, this, I finally found the Prophet ﷺ lying. So he goes and calls everybody, come listen to what Muhammad is saying. He said he went to Palestine, he went to Masjid al-Aqsa last night. Come listen to this man. And one of the Sahaba ran right away to find Sayyidina Abu Bakr. And he tells Sayyidina Abu Bakr, almost in disbelief, but he doesn't know what to say. He says, Ya Abu Bakr, the Prophet وسلم, is saying that he went to Masjid Al-Aqsa last night. Sayyidina Abu Bakr looked at this individual with yaqeen in his heart. He says, Aqalaha, did he say it? He said, yes, Qala Sadaq. He is truthful. So he runs with this individual to the Prophet وسلم, and Sayyidina Abu Bakr stands before the Prophet and the Prophet وسلم, is saying his story and the Sayyidina Abu Bakr called Sadaq So Abu Jahl is confused, how can you believe him? And it's not logical Sayyidina Abu Bakr said, we all know the Prophet وسلم, has never been to Masjid Al-Aqsa but we have. Let's question him. And if he is right, then he is correct. And every question they ask the Prophet وسلم, even before anyone else can answer, Sayyidina Abu Bakr will, will iterate, Sadaq, Sadaq, Sadaq. He tells the truth, he tells the truth, he tells the truth. And at this mawqif, at this scenario, Sayyidina Abu Bakr was given the title of As-Siddiq, the truthful one. Not because he was truthful with his tongue, Sayyidina Abu Bakr didn't say anything. It's because he was truthful with every part of his body. He believed the Prophet وسلم, even before anything was said. He was truthful in his heart. And today's khutbah, the reason I began my khutbah with the story, is as Muslims, I want us to return back, starting with myself before all of you. Instead of just working on our outer appearances, to work on our characteristics, to work on the things that people cannot see about us, 
But when they look at us, they know this is the character of a Muslim. This is the character of a one who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the first characteristic that I wanted to choose was a sidq. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He commands us to sidq. He commands us to be truthful. And I began my khutbah with it today, but to reiterate for all of us, He says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqu allaha wa qoolu qawlan sadeeda. O oh, you who believe, be conscious of Allah and speak the truth. And he says in another verse, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqu allaha wa qoolu ma'a sadiqeen. O you who believe, have taqwa in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And be with the ones that are truth tellers. And being truthful has three phases. And with three different groups of people. The first is being truthful with your speech. The second is being truthful with your intentions. And the third is being truthful with your actions. And we're going to go through them together inshallah in the short time that we have. And the three groups of people that we have to be truthful with. The first is being truthful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second is being truthful with others. And the third is being truthful with ourselves. But before we go in and deep dive, let's see what this characteristics of truth, how was it mentioned in the Quran? It was mentioned by many of the prophets. All of them were truthful, but specific prophets were narrated in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about Sayyidina Ibrahim. He says, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَدِّقًا نَبِيًّا And then he continues and he says, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِدْرِيسَ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَدِّقًا نَبِيًّا And he says in the same surah, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِسْمَعِيلَ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَادِقَ الْوَعْدِ وَكَانَ رَسُولًا نَبِيًّا all of them, one after the other, after the other. The characteristic that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for these prophets is that they are truthful. And of course, the best of creation. Even before his, even before his nibuwa, even before he became a prophet, he was known as a sadiq al-ameen. Even after his prophethood even after his prophethood. The people of Quraysh knew that the Prophet ﷺ was truthful. And it is in no better situation that you see this than in the story with Abu Sufyan with Hiraq. Abu Sufyan was traveling many years after the birth of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet had wrote a letter to Hiraq, which is the king of the Byzantine Empire. So Hiraq told his people, go find me someone that lives in the Arabian Peninsula. So they gathered the Arabs in the, in the region. And at the head of them was Abu Sufyan. And Abu Sufyan comes forward and Hiraq tells him, oh Abu Sufyan, do not lie to me. Because if you lie to me, your friends will tell me and I will know. And Abu Sufyan when was asked, has the Prophet وسلم, ever lied to you before? Abu Sufyan said no. And a shahid is in this next part. Hiraql says, ما كان يستحي أن يكذب على الناس فيكذب على الله. It's not likely, it's impossible that a man can fear to lie to people, but have the courage to lie to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the characteristics of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what many of us don't realize is sidq isn't something that we do once. It's something that we constantly do. Something that's habitual. And it's something that we are raised with. And it's so profoundly said in this next hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, إِنَّ الصِّدْقَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْبِرِّ وَإِنَّ الْبِرَّ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلْ 
يتحرض الصدق حتى يكتب عند الله صديقا truly صدق truly truthfulness being truthful in all aspects leads to righteousness you want to be righteous especially in this month be honest be truthful but it doesn't stop there it continues and he says and truly righteousness leads to Jannah everything that we're doing our only hope but this next part is so beautiful and the individual the, the person he holds himself to the highest standard of telling the truth He's so conscious of every word that he says, every action that he has. Until he's written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is truthful. And it's not just in this hadith, in another hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's saying, inni za'imun, it's a long hadith, but I'm going to get my shahid. Inni za'imun fi baytin fi wasati al-jannah. I am a guarantor of a house in the middle of Jannah. Whoever stops lying, whoever tells the truth, even if they're joking. So tell the truth in every scenario. There is no circumstance where you can tell the, where you can lie. A man came to the Prophet, وسلم, Ya Rasulullah. Can a believer be misery, not, not generous? Can a believer be a coward, scared? Can a believer be a liar? No. So this is why every last one of us, this characteristic is crucial in all of our actions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the reward. The rank that we sit at when we hold ourselves to the standard of excellence. When we hold ourselves to being honest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا. And Allah subhanahu wa taala says, whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, truly the rank that they will be at. He started off with the prophets, and the second group right away is the truth tellers. May Allah subhanahu wa taala allow us to be amongst the sadiqin. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لكم فاستغفروا إنه غفور رحيم. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا The evidence of being truthful can go on and on and on Three things I want us to take away from today The first is that there is no circumstance of course, there are limited circumstances, but there are generally no circumstance where we should want to lie or need to lie or lie intentionally. And it's even sadder when we are trying to do good deeds in the month of Ramadan and we lie outright. And some of us think that these are white lies and there's no such thing as a white lie. And the reality is we teach it to our children without even realizing. When somebody calls us and our child picks up and they ask, where is your father, where is your mother? And we tell our child, tell him he's sleeping. Tell him he's not here. Tell him he's busy. What are we teaching our children? We're blatantly teaching them to lie. Or worse, when they do something wrong, and our, their fear of our punishment is so high that they're afraid to tell us the truth, that they revert to lying. No, as adults, no, as parents, we have made a mistake. 
Because we didn't instill in them the love of telling the truth greater than the fear of lying to us. And that is a mistake. So one, never lie. And two, at Taraweeh, it's happened so recently in the last few days, where the brothers ask, did you register? And for subhanAllah, for some reason, the action of salah, the thing that's supposed to lead us to do good, is leading us to do bad. Many of us will say, yes, I registered. Even though they know in their heart they didn't register. How is that logical? How is that the actions and the characteristics of people of the Ummah of Muhammad This is what we have to aspire to. The aspire to have excellence in all of our actions. So let's make that our homework for the week. Let's make that our action just for this week. Hold yourself accountable every night. Did I lie? Did I say something I shouldn't have said? Did I do something that I shouldn't have done? And no one can hold you accountable except yourself. No one can know. Most times if you lie, you can get away with the lie. But the only one that will know if you told the truth or not is yourself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to see the haqq. Allahum ayna al-haqq haqqa wa razuqna al-tiba'a wa ayna al-baatila baatila wa razuqna al-ishtinaba Allahum ahdina fi man ahdayt wa aafina fi man aafayt wa tawalana fi man tawalayt Allahum ahdina wa ahdi bina wa ajalna sababa li man ihtada Allahum ahdina wa ahdi bina wa ajalna sababa li man ihtada Ibadullah inna Allah ya'mu bil'adli wa l-ihsani wa ita'i dhul-qurba وإن عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واستغفروه يغفر لكم وأقم الصلاة